and today we're going to talk about my top 10 men's marketed fragrances for women. Now that doesn't mean that I don't recommend these for men. I definitely do. So any guys out there watching, I recommend these for you just as much as I do for women. I just, you know, sometimes I think that we tend to pass over or kind of forget about some of the fragrances that are marketed by gender. You know, most niche are not and indie, they're not marketed by gender. But when it comes to designer fragrances, sometimes we might pass over the opposite gender section. And a lot of times there can be a lot of really great unisex offerings there. So uh, if you would like fellas for me to do a women's fragrances that I think are good for men video, let me know, I can do that. Leave me a comment down below. But today we're focusing on my top 10 men's fragrances that I personally love wearing and that I think a lot of women out there might enjoy wearing as well. And of course the men too. <laughs> Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I do have two honorable mentions, so I'll begin with those and then we'll get into the top 10. All right, my first honorable mention, I just have a decant of it here from Max Aroma, not sponsored, that's where I bought it. Um, but anyway, this is called Prada Lome Intense. Now, I really do like this fragrance. It was uh, created by Daniela Andrea, which you would probably guess since it's from Prada. But this one, the reason why it's an honorable mention is because I will be featuring a couple similar fragrances on my list. And this of the sort of iris-based men's marketed fragrances is my least favorite of the three that I will talk about. So I figured I would just put it as an honorable mention. Um, anyway, this is really nice. It has like iris, there's some tonka-y sort of like spicy thing going on. I would say a bit of leather and sort of like a, a resinous ambery touch to it, maybe even a little bit woody, but not nothing too uh, strong. I think this is fairly, like it's not super light, but fairly light to the point where you could wear this like to work and I don't think that, you know, it would be overpowering or anything. Uh, but again, that one is Prada Lome Intense and I really enjoy it. However, there are a couple other iris focused fragrances that I prefer over it. My other honorable mention is from Tom Ford and I don't have it anymore, although I previously did. However, I have the quote unquote female version of it. So the fragrance that I'm recommending as an honorable mention is Tom Ford Noir Extreme, but I have Noir Pour Femme. Now the reason why I still got this out is because they smell incredibly similar. And in fact, like one of the very first videos I ever did on my channel was comparing the Noir Pour Femme to the Noir Extreme because they are very similar. So essentially, Men could definitely wear this one, women can wear the Noir Extreme, and for the most part, unless you like smell them side by side, I would guess a lot of people would not really know the difference between the two. Um, in general, um, from what I can remember when I used to have the Noir Extreme is that it's a little bit spicier, um, whereas the Noir Pour Femme is a little bit like creamier and sort of full bodied, but they both basically have this Kulfi Accord that's created that's sort of like this um, ice cream dessert. And it definitely has sort of like a vanillic spiciness to it that makes sense with, you know, an ice cream Accord. I would say there also is a bit of woodiness to this fragrance and I believe the Noir Extreme as well. But if you've never smelled that one, it's pretty easy to find uh, testers of it like Sephora and places like that. So definitely check it out. And like I said, also, you know, if you see a tester of the Noir Pour Femme, you could check that out too and compare and just see which version you prefer. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention that Sonia Constant made both this and the Noir Extreme, so same perfumer. Again, maybe why they're fairly similar, but she's fantastic. I love her work. Um, and if you don't know her, check her out. She has a lot of great fragrances. All right, so now let's get into the top 10 list. And up first is a fragrance from Zaharoff. This one is called Business Over Pleasure, and it was created in collaboration with Ross over at TLTG Reviews. Um, he did send this to me as a gift, so I got this for free, but literally everything else on this list I paid for. So this is the only thing, but I wanted to mention it since I did get it for free. Anyway, I actually talked about this fragrance and the Siren when I did a review of Justin's fragrance called Brass and Soul, and I like all three of them quite a bit. But um, Justin's fragrance is a bit more on the masculine side, which is why I'm not featuring it here because it doesn't uh, lean as unisex to me. Whereas the Siren, which is uh, Andrea's fragrance from Curly Sense, she actually has it, or well, Zaharoff has it listed as unisex, I believe. Um, so I didn't include that because it's already listed as unisex. Um, either way, I think that this one and the Siren definitely are unisex. Um, and I think that Justin's is a little bit more masculine leaning. But anyway, uh, let's talk about this one here, uh, Business Over Pleasure. So this one, let me spray this again, it's kind of losing it. So this is a, an iris fragrance again, but the iris here is a little bit lighter. Um, 
And I would say it's more in equal proportions with some of the other ingredients. In this, I definitely get like a peppery spiciness that I really enjoy. I get like a bit of ginger. It does have a, a lightness and a freshness to it, but there's also a bit of woods, I think, maybe a bit of citrus in the opening too. This one I think is great, just kind of everyday, easy wear, definitely can work to the office, hence the name. Um, and this one was created by Claude Deere, uh, who has done a few other fragrances that I own, but yeah, this is a really nice. I thoroughly enjoy this fragrance. It is pretty light, so if you want it to last all day, you might have to reapply, but as you probably know if you know me, I don't really care about that. Uh, so anyway, that one is Business Over Pleasure from Zaharoff. Next we have one from Guerlain. This is L'Homme Ideal Cologne, and this was created by Terry Vasser. So this fragrance is discontinued, but you can still find it secondhand uh, places or even still new in the box. But it's starting to get a little pricier than it used to be. In fact, at one point these were popping up in like TJ Maxx. I don't know, this was like two or three years ago for like 30 bucks. But now you're gonna pay more than that, unfortunately. <laughs> so anyway, um, I enjoy this whole Loam Ideal line, except for maybe one or two. But in general, I really like this line. But this is my favorite. It's really fresh. It's got like an almond kind of thing going on. But then there's this really bright sort of citrus combo. I would guess it's grapefruit, but they're probably, it, you know, probably is bergamot because that's in everything. But Kind of smells like a, a nice tart, bright grapefruit to me in here, accompanied by the almond note. I also do think there's a touch of neroli, which isn't my favorite note, but it doesn't go like super bitter here, so I can definitely tolerate it in this fragrance. And then the other sort of thing I get that comes out more in the dry down is like a bit of woodiness and musk. But uh, all in all, I think this is a nice fresh fragrance that's again, very unisex and can be worn, uh, I guess whenever you want. It's like a fairly easy wear, but personally, I would say like daytime, especially summer is when I would mostly wear this, but I think like warm spring days or warm fall days too. But really for me, this screams kind of summertime because of that citrus that's in here. Next up is one from the house of Givenchy and it is Pie. Now this one was created by Alberto Marias. Again, I bought this decant from Max Roma, not sponsored. <laughs> um, and this one is an older fragrance. It's been around for a while, but it doesn't smell dated to me. This one, in fact, Oh, it's really nice. It's again, pretty light. I'm gonna guess that the older formulations of this were probably a bit more dense just because of the way things tend to go. Um, but the way this current formulation that I have smells, it's like, it's light, but it has sort of a gourmand quality to it, but balanced with like spices too. And this I definitely pick up an almond note. I pick up some vanilla, maybe like a bit of a, not too powdery, more like on the spicy end of tonka. Yeah, and I think that there could be like a touch of, mm, I'm not sure, it kind of smells like, um, there might be a little bit of anise in here, but it doesn't smell like licorice a ton, just like a light touch of it in there. A little bit of woodiness in the dry down on this one. It never gets too loud, but it, I can definitely detect it on myself for quite some time. This I think you can find for a pretty decent price on discounters if you are curious. Uh, but you know, of course, I always recommend testing first. Anyway, this is another one that I think would be really good more for fall. Uh, maybe not so much winter because it is kind of light. I'm not sure that it would cut through the cold the way that some of the other ones I'll talk about do. But yeah, I think this is a nice one for like kind of the early to like mid fall when it's not too cold. Next up is one that I like for multiple reasons. It is from Etat Libre d'Orange and it is Fat Electrician. Now this is a niche house and so Actually, most of their fragrances, I think, are marketed as unisex, but there are a few here and there that I think they market, you know, one way or the other. Anyway, Fat Electrician is like a vetiver fragrance for sure. There's no denying it. If you know what vetiver smells like, you will immediately detect it in this one because it is the most prominent note for sure. I love this fragrance partially because I really enjoy vetiver, um, but also because of the name Fat Electrician. My dad is an electrician. I've mentioned it before, and it just makes me chuckle. <laughs> but anyway, um, so this one was created by... Antoine Mason do and yeah you just get that you get that vetiver right away but there's like an like a sort of a, a pepperiness to it in the opening and as it starts to dry down a bit it becomes a little bit more vanillic so it's like this vetiver vanilla combo this does maybe have a little bit of a resinous quality to it as well but yet again it stays pretty light like the the pie does from Givenchy this one I would say has a little bit more oomph to it but it doesn't last so long so it projects more but doesn't last very long um, I still don't really mind I really enjoy the fragrance itself 
And I think this one for me is more like spring through fall, daytime wear personally, but um, you know, depending on where you are, maybe this could work in the winter too. It just gets probably a little too cold here for this one. Definitely worn it in the summer though, and it doesn't get too overpowering. I really, really enjoy it, Fat Electrician. And if you're a fan of vetiver and haven't smelled this one, you should definitely check it out, especially if you like the idea of vetiver with vanilla, because that's mostly the combo that I get here. Anyway, love that one. That is number seven. Next up is another niche offering, which is again surprising because typically most of the fragrances from this house are marketed as unisex, but Killian does indeed market a few towards one gender or the other. And this is the case for Straight to Heaven. It's marketed as a men's fragrance. I just have this like Killian travel spray here, but I do really enjoy this one. So this is a boozy kind of fragrance. It was created by Sydney Lancaster and yeah, I definitely get the booziness right away. I think it's supposed to be rum that's in here, but I don't remember exactly kind of what I'm getting, but I get a woodiness right away as well. So I get the booziness, I get some woods. I can definitely detect patchouli in this, but it's not like, you know, super pungent or anything. It's more on the woody kind of dry end of patchouli. There was also something just the tiniest bit sweet adding to it. Um, I'm not sure if it's vanilla or what, but there is a, a slight bit of sweetness. It's not very sweet overall, but like just something adding the tiniest bit of sweetness that I think is kind of the reason why I like it. I feel like without that, I, I might not enjoy this as much. It has a little bit of spice to it. I would guess there's vanilla, honestly. I would, but can't be sure. Um, either way, I really enjoy this fragrance, and I think that a lot of women, if you like boozy fragrances. If you like the smell of alcohol in your fragrances, then you'll like Straight to Heaven. I also would, of course, highly recommend uh, Angel Share, <laughs> as you know, but uh, that one is marketed as unisex, so I'm not featuring it in this video. In the number five spot is one that I've talked about before being marketed towards men, but very much a unisex scent. And it kind of surprised me coming from this house because they do market a lot of their fragrances as unisex. But this one is indeed, if you check the bottle, marketed towards men. This is Replica's Jazz Club. So this is another boozy fragrance. And I believe again, it's rum that is the alcohol that's supposed to be kind of uh, recreated in this scent. But Mmm, I love this one. This is really good. This is my second favorite of the Replica line. By the Fireplace is my favorite. Um, but yeah, so this one was created by Eleanor um, Massonet. And oh, it's this beautiful blend of like a vanilla rum sort of thing going on with a bit of tobacco. It does also have maybe a slight woodiness to it, a little bit of a spice, like a, a bright peppery kind of a spice to it and maybe a slight balsamic quality as well. I would say this one in general really reminds me of fall. Um, again, kind of light for the winter, but could definitely work if it's not a super cold day. But yeah, this makes me wanna be like kind of cozy in a like a dimly lit place like a jazz club, for example. But um, yeah, I think that this will appeal to a lot of women, not just men. So if you've ever passed this one up because it says that it is a male fragrance, um, don't pass it up next time. Give it a smell. Uh, again, easy one to get a tester of at Sephora. And I think if you like, you know, a lot of vanillic tobacco kind of fragrances like I do, you'll probably like this. But again, it is boozy, so there's that as well. In the number four position is a fragrance that I don't currently own a bottle of, but I hope to very soon. This comes from the house of Valentino and it is called Womo Intense. I don't know if you can see that tiny little print there. Uh, I got this uh, decant and this other one from Valentino as well from myfragrancesamples.com. I really like their decant service. As you can see, they're pretty nice. Um, and they often have sales. So, you know, if you've never checked it out, go over there. But that's where I purchased both of these. So um, anyway, Womo Intense is one of the two kind of dominant iris fragrances that, or iris dominant fragrances that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And this one does smell a little bit like Dior Homme Intense, which may or may not show up on this list very shortly. <laughs> um, but I, I really like this, maybe just not as much as the other one that's coming up soon. So this is a really nice, it's like a leathery iris combo with some vanilla that gives it like mm, a little bit of a sweetness to it. It's really cozy. It's, it's so nice. I would say this does have a, a slight, like the tiniest bit of a powderiness to it, probably I would guess from Tonka. There, I'm sure there's other stuff going on as well. I think there is sage in this one. Um, but anyway, this is just this really, it's like a warm iris. Uh, 
I would say it's a little bit makeup-y, but maybe less so than the other one I'm gonna talk about. Um, yeah, oh, it's so nice. I really, really like it. Definitely like heavier on the like leathery end uh, for sure. But that's fantastic. It was created by Sophie LeBay, by the way. And also, just real quick, I also got this uh, Womo Noir Absolute. It doesn't really smell the same to me. It kind of goes in a different direction. There's no iris in this that I can detect, but I do like this one as well. You can kind of tell that they're related. Um, I did also get the regular Womo from Valentino, and I did not like that as much as either of these. That one seemed, I don't know, it just didn't appeal to me as much. So the Womo Intense is probably my favorite of the three that I tried from Valentino, but then I also really like the Womo Noir Absolute. So either of those I would recommend, um, but not as much the regular Womo. I'm sure a lot of people like it, but for me, it was my least favorite of the three. All right, we've made it to the top three, and next up in the number three position is this one here, Spice Bomb Extreme. So I've tried all the flankers of Spice Bomb, I believe, and um, Spice Bomb Extreme was previously my favorite, but I will tell you about another one that I recently smelled that I think I like even more. But let's just start with Spice Bomb Extreme. So this one, mmm, <laughs> it is delicious. This is vanilla and tobacco with a whole bunch of spices. Like, to me, it smells like a lot of different baking spices, that kind of thing maybe a bit of like a, a pepperiness to it as well. I do think I can take the tiniest bit of lavender to this one, but it's not really that strong to me. It's all about the vanilla, the tobacco, and the spice. And I just think it's delicious. It does have, again, a little bit of like a soft powderiness to it, even though this is a pretty strong fragrance. Um, I just adore it. I'm not sure who the perfumer is for uh, Spice Bomb Extreme, but, uh, I really, really like it. The one that I think I might like slightly more that I just recently tried, thanks to my friend Brandon over at Da Vinci's Alchemist, I'll link him down below. But he sent me a little decant from his bottle of Spice Bomb Infrared, and I think I like this even more. I'm pretty sure that the, the main thing that was supposed to be different about this one is that they added like a, a red fruits accord to it. I don't know if that means like red berries, apple, what, but, um, mm. Yeah, it definitely has like a little bit of a freakiness to it, but still has a lot of the, the base characteristics of Spice Bomb. So uh, Spice Bomb Infrared and Extreme, I both highly recommend. I think they're both fantastic. And like I said, um, I think I might slightly prefer this newer one, but it's really, really close and I don't know that it matters that much. I probably won't go out and buy a bottle of this just because it is somewhat similar to Extreme and I already have this one. All right, now in the number two position is the iris fragrance you've probably been expecting all along. This one is from Dior and it is called Dior Homme Intense. This was of course created by Francois de Maché and uh, he is the house perfumer for Dior. So he's created most of their creations for the last, God, I don't know, decade or so. Um, but this one is the new version, newer, like 2020 version of Dior Homme Intense. However, um, from what I've heard, it's, it's fairly similar to the previous version um, and I really, really like it. So this one is again, of course, iris. It's like a woody iris, but it has um, ambrette in here, which is a note that I really, really love. Mm, it gives it that slight sort of uh, dirty muskiness to it. Oh, it's so good. I think there's also pear in this one, a bit of lavender, some vetiver, but that like lipsticky iris in here in combo with the ambra is just wonderful. So if you dig woody iris fragrances, then definitely check out Dior Homme Intense. But um, I have tried some of the others from the line. Again, from my fragrance samples, I picked up um, this Dior Homme 2016 version. So it's I think they call it Dior Homme Original, not the Dior Homme 2020. That one got rid of the iris. So I do not recommend that one. But uh, the Dior Homme Original, the previous formulation of it, if you can find that, um, this one, still has that iris in there, but it's like a bit maybe more leathery with this one. Kind of a little bit more in line with the Valentino, um, now that I'm kind of thinking about it, but I really, really like the original Dior Homme, and um, I am hoping to get to try the Dior Homme Parfum version very, very soon, because I know people rave about that as well. Uh, so basically, any of the Dior Homme line that includes iris <laughs> is on my recommendation list, but the one that I own and I really enjoy is Dior Homme Intense. 
All right, we have made it to my number one spot, and I'm curious if anybody has guessed it yet. Um, if you watch my videos frequently, you might be familiar with my collection and know what other men's marketed fragrance I might have remaining. If you still haven't guessed it, it is from the House of Parfum de Marly, and it is Herod. Now, Parfum de Marly is a, a brand or a house that does do the gendered thing pretty often. They do have some that they market as unisex, but a lot of their collection is marketed as either men's or women's, and the women's line has totally different bottles. Uh, but the unisex and the men's line all come in bottles that look essentially like this, but different colors. And Herod is just my favorite one, maybe of all the Parfum de Marly that I've tried so far. I also really like um, Oajan and uh, of course, Delina Exclusive and Delina. There are others I enjoy as well, but those are some of my favorites. Um, Mm -hmm. This is so good. So this is just tobacco, vanilla, there's a bit of woodiness. It's like a creamy woodiness. And then sort of like a, I don't know, like a little bit of like a spicy sort of resinous thing going on. I'm not exactly sure what that is, um, but it's just fantastic. This was created by Olivier Pichu, by the way. And I just, I think this blend is so great for fall and winter. It's so cozy. I think it's great for like daytime, but especially in the evening, like I think of cozying up on the couch at night during the fall and winter. Oh, I love it. I love this fragrance. This one is my favorite male marketed fragrance for sure. And I personally love wearing it as well. So anyway, uh, those are my recommendations for men's fragrances that I think women might enjoy wearing. I personally enjoy wearing every single one of these on this list. And I think that they are definitely unisex in terms of their profile. But uh, of course, a lot of companies do like to market it towards one or the other. So perhaps you've overlooked these in the past. By the way, I would love to know from you all if you have recommendations for other men's fragrances that you think are really unisex. If so, please leave a comment down below and let us know that way other people can check there and get some other recommendations because of course not everyone's tastes are like mine. Uh, so that would be really helpful if you can leave further recommendations below. Uh, likewise, if you are curious to have me do a video where I talk about female marketed fragrances that I think are unisex, um, I can do that as well. So leave me comments down below. I appreciate it. Um, and that is all. <laughs> so I hope you like this video. So please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.